Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Adam through Sanofsky Socks, and today we're going to be talking about another SPAC. And the reason why I've been into SPAC so lately is because it is a good day to be an investor if you're involved in the SPAC market, right? Just recently we saw, if you're looking down here, and back uh, a stock that I recently talked about in a couple of my videos on my channel is planning on merging with an electric vehicle charging company. This was up 86% um, yesterday, okay? And I mean, in general, you're looking at Slack was up 37% and other SPACs were just going crazy, right? CIAC, which is, again, another SPAC uh, that's going to merge with Arrival. This guy went up, I'll quickly pull up the chart, but this guy went up an insane amount by over, over even the past five days from like $17 to $25, which is like a 47% move. And I bought that stock um, and I was able to get such a good gain. Okay. So this is another stock that I think I'm going to put money in ASAP when the market opens. Um, one, because it's again, another SPAC play. And I think it again, is little known. People are starting to realize what this company is and put money into it. Uh, but let's just go through it and I'll give you my opinion on why I'm putting my money in. Of course, do your own research before buying and selling stocks, especially risky plays like this. Um, but I'll give you a couple points of why I actually like this stock and I like this SPAC and it's not as risky as it might seem, okay? So this is a cloud-based company called Point, and it's to go public through a SPAC, basically a blank check company merger with Apex Technology, okay? And recently this run-up in the stock has not been so much. Um, it's up 24% though after hours as of yesterday and on the five-day chart, it's up like close to 8%, so about 28%. Um, if we're including the after hours buying, okay. So what is the stock or what is a point? It's an independent software vendor. Um, and it pretty much provides solutions for Microsoft 365 for migrating, managing, and protecting data in Microsoft. Okay. And now that it's going public through a merger and the deal is expected to close in the first quarter of 2021. Okay. So let's look a little bit more closely on what uh, a point does. Okay. Um, so first of all, on the transaction details, um, the expected market cap is going to be $2 billion and the uh, transaction is expected to close in the first quarter of 2021, all right? And what we see here is that, you know, 72% um, of the ownership is going to go to existing shareholders and 21% of ownership is going to go to Apex public shareholders. So pretty much a fifth of uh, the price Right. And if there's a two billion market cap, a fifth of that would be, uh, of course, four hundred million dollars. Right. And so we expect to see maybe a market cap of four hundred million dollars. And we can see right now it's four hundred eighty nine with a 20 percent move above that. That would push it even higher uh, to around six hundred, seven hundred million market cap. So, again, definitely a bit overvalued. But, you know, these IPOs can fluctuate and, and essentially uh, investing into these SPAC companies is a good way to expose yourself to these companies before they merge on, they merge and they become an actual, um, they become an actual stock on the market, which can, which usually sends companies like this, uh, through the roof, right? So it's a way to get in before uh, the massive moves, um, are done when they actually merge and, and trade on the New York stock exchange under a new ticker symbol, right? So even though it still seems like it's overvalued, this should be trading at 400 million market cap based on a fifth of five, uh, two billion dollars. Um, it still might be a good deal and I might have to put in money ASAP, okay? And the next thing is, of course, um, the founder and CEO is Renown and they're actually already working with Microsoft Teams. So they actually have revenue, all right? And they're just trying to do this back deal to actually gain more money um, and to raise funds to, of course, have continued growth, all right? And essentially timing on these SPACs is key, right? As soon as so, too many people know about it, the price shoots up like crazy and then, you know, it, it's too late to get in, right? So I might have to, of course, put money in, okay? So um, if we're looking at what a point is, uh, again, a data management leader in massive and rapidly growing Microsoft Cloud Marketplace, total adjustable market growth to be $33 billion by 2022, right? Um, and it's already large and established, which is why I don't think this company is going to go bankrupt or I don't think it's necessarily such a risky play because look at this, they have over 1300 employees in 29 global offices already, right? Um, and approximately 7 uh, million cloud users, monthly uh, cloud users over 16,000 accounts, okay? 
And again, it's already a top Microsoft uh, cloud partner. So of course it's relying on Microsoft for a uh, majority, if not all of its revenues, which of course is risky, but if it's already a trusted Microsoft partner, they're not going anywhere anytime soon, right? Especially if they're already integrated within Microsoft, okay? Um, and they have compelling growth vectors, research and development, of course, expanding channel and distribution partnerships, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and they're expected to have for their 2020 to have um, quite a big annual revenue, right? We can see already 148 million in revenue for 2020, uh, which is 30% growth and 14% margin, okay? Uh, they also have around like a 13 price to sales ratio, which is um, better than many other companies who went uh, public through this um, through this back merge, okay? Um, and of course, through the pandemic, we've seen a large acceleration in, in terms of digital transformation. Uh, and here we can see that, you know, Microsoft is pretty much on the leaderboard uh, for many of these digital transformations, okay? So, um, of course, what they do is that, you know, part of it is that they bridge the gap between what Microsoft Cloud offers and what, you know, the enterprise requires, right? Uh, so, again, what they're talking about is, of course, security, uh, transformation of data, um, compliance, and governance, right? So, you know, Microsoft is basically focusing on pr pretty much providing their um, uh, businesses while like the office tools, while a point is uh, trying to make sure that the data is secure, properly managed, et cetera, right? Um, via like a cloud uh, based system. Okay. So this is expanding market and what they're um, addressing here is of course their past revenue growth, which we can see has went nicely from 75 million uh, to 78 million in second quarter of 2019 to 85 and finally in quarter, fourth quarter of 2019 to $90 million. So over there they went from 75 million to a 15 million increase uh, in revenue to 90 million. Okay. Uh, and of course, even then from the year end 2019, to first quarter, they again, 95 million, and then second quarter of 2020 to 101 million, right? So quite nice uh, revenue growth. So again, what I like about this company, it's a bit more secure. You already know that they're going to have recurring revenue. So I feel more confident in actually buying this stock and holding this stock long term, okay? Especially the stack, uh, the SPACs one, okay? Again, this is a play that you should get into um, as early as possible. I know that I already missed a pretty big move of 20%, but still, I don't think it's too late to get in, as we saw with the move of, you know, one of these charging stations of over 86%. Oh, that's spazzing out. Um, so we can see that they're not only projected to increase their revenues, they're projected to increase their uh, recurring revenue, right? So these are just some of the projections. So in, in total and expected revenue uh, for 2020 is going to be $148 million, 2021, $193 million, and 2022, $257 million. Of course, these are just estimates, okay? So if we look at their revenue growth and profit margins, which is, um, or gross margins, it, it, these are big numbers, right? So let's take a look. So again, they're expected to have 26% growth in their revenue um, year over year for 2020. 2021, 30% revenue growth. Double digit revenue growth is, is insane, it's crazy, right? So this is pretty good if they actually are able to hit these numbers. And for 2022, 33% uh, revenue growth compared to 2021, right? To $257 million, okay? Let's talk about their gross profit, okay? So we're seeing here, um, they're already expected to increase their gross profit. So from 20, 20, 2019, they had 69% uh margin, whereas in 2020, it's expected to do 72% gross margin, okay? So, which is a nice increase, right? So, which means that for every extra dollar of revenue, um, more of that is going straight down to the bottom line and more of that is going pretty much into profits, right? Um, so, instead of 69 cents on the dollar going to profits, it's going to be 72 cents on the dollar uh, in terms of profits. That That's how you can think of it, right? And by 2022, they're expected to have 74% margin, which is huge. That is just, you know, very impressive. And that makes sense, right? Because mm, once you have the technology and the infrastructure on the cloud already there, uh, of course, uh, every penny in revenue is going to churn out more in profits, right? Uh, one, because of course, that's the way tech work. And two, because of uh, something called economies of scale, right? So um, again, please do your own research before buying and selling stocks. This is just my advice. Um, and, you know, you got to be careful when you're investing in these big SPAC plays and especially a lot of companies that are hyped up and it's getting increasingly harder to find 
these little known SPAC companies um, through, you know, channels like online, through other YouTube channels, etc. So, I mean, of course, do your own research and, you know, one is one thing is to buy into the hype, but also to be careful and know exactly what you're buying into. So, of course, due diligence is key. And of course, just because I'm buying a stock doesn't mean that you need to be buying a stock. This is just, you know, my opinion. I just figured I want to share what I'm doing in the market because it seems to be working out so far, uh, especially with uh, the NBAC play that I talked about a couple days ago, uh, even like with Nordstrom after earnings. Um, so yeah, if you do enjoy these videos, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. They're a lot of fun for me to do, but I do appreciate the support. Um, yeah, let me know what you think about uh, APXT, Apex Technologies, which is going to merge with Point. okay? So again, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.